In this video, I'm going to talk about ancient Egyptian astrology, gods and goddesses. Ancient Egyptian astrology was known as the wisdom of the ages. The ancient Egyptians of long ago were fascinated with the stars at night and were masters of astronomy. They were interested in many of the same constellations we use today. However, they were viewed a little differently than in the modern times. If you're a fan of astronomy and stargazing, you're probably familiar with the constellation the Big Dipper. But to the ancient Egyptians, they saw this formation of stars as the front leg of an ox. Astrology has been used for over a thousand years by the time it reached ancient Egypt. Astrology was a natural progression from astronomy, or looking at the stars, transits, the transits of the planets that were visible at the time, which was introduced to Mesopotamia from the Sumerians before them, and was later influenced by the Babylonians and the Greeks in the centuries thereafter. Alexander the Great is believed to be the first to spread astrology through the Middle East and Asia around 330 BCE. To the Egyptians, the stars represented life itself, and this was where life began. This was exhibited in their mythology, magic, and ceremonial rituals. One such myth was a belief that all life on earth started with the visitation of an outer-worldly race of extremely intelligent beings called the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki, which means those who from heavens to earth came, are often depicted as large winged beings with the head of, it looks like an eagle or predatory bird, and can be seen on many of the Sumerian tablets in museums around the world. The ancient Egyptians believed the Anunnaki to be of a higher power, living in the cosmos, and the stars in the heavens were gods and goddesses ruling over all life forms here on earth. Literally, as above, so below. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt so worshipped the stars they believed they were reincarnations of the gods here on earth. By worshipping the stars, they would be gifted with the glory of immortality as well as invincibility. Hundreds of pyramids were constructed throughout Egypt as final resting places for the mighty kings, queens, and pharaohs amid the beauty of the majestic Sahara Desert. Interestingly, each pyramid, when observed from the air, appears to align perfectly with the stars in the night sky. This is most evident when we look at the alignment of the Egyptian pyramids of the Giza necropolis with the constellation Orion. In the pyramid of Khufu, the southern shaft leads up to the king's chamber and lines up exactly with the constellation Delta Orinus, or more familiar, familiarly known as Orion's Belt. If one were to follow the southern shaft leading up to the Queen's Chamber, they would find it points to the dog star Sirius. Observation of the stars and the study of astronomy were first recorded by the Babylonians in 1600 BCE. The Babylonians carefully documented important astrological dates, eclipses, as well as the position of the planets. The Egyptians, however, went way beyond mere observation, and they actually worshipped the stars in the heavens. Ancient Egyptian astronomers were priests who, were used, who used the position of the stars to provide for the needs of the gods, as well as to predict the annual flooding of the Nile. Orion was one of the most important stars in the night sky because they believed that the gods descended from the belt of Orion and Sirius. 
According to Egyptian mythology, Sirius and Orion represent Isis and Osiris, the god and goddesses associated with the beginning of civilization. Their celestial fascination, adorn, adoration and Heliotree is evident when one observes the position of over a hundred identified pyramids throughout Egypt. Egyptian astrology is one of the fundamental building, building blocks in the evolution of modern Western astrology that we use today. One of the earliest known examples of the Egyptian zodiac can be seen in the Louvre in Paris, France. There, you can see the beautiful hieroglyphs of the Dindra zodiac taken from the ceiling of the chapel from the Hathor temple in Dedera, Egypt. The decorative sandstone chapel, which dates back to 50 BCE during the time of Queen Cleopatra, was constructed in honor of the god Osiris and is dedicated to the goddesses Hathor and Isis. The beautiful decorated masonry contains celestial images of the stars as well as the ancient gods and goddesses. The Greek influence on astrology can be seen well uh, as well with depictions of modern Western zodiac symbols amid the painted blue splendor of the artifact. The Dendera uh, Temple was constructed in the Hellenistic era in the time of the beautiful and captivating Queen Cleopatra. Cleopatra had proclaimed herself a re reincarnation of the goddess Isis and was the last active pharaoh of the Potomac Egypt from 51 to 30 BCE. In the summer of 47 BCE, with Julius Caesar by her side, Cleopatra began a two-month voyage along the River Nile. During that time, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar visited the sacred temple at Dendera, where Cleopatra was being worshipped as a pharaoh. If one were so inclined to visit the temple today in Egypt, they would see the beautiful ancient relief of the plate... Ptolemaic Queen Victoria VII, as well as her son with Julius Caesar, Caesarian, intricately carved into the stonework. Another interesting artifact from ancient Egypt is the Cairo calendar, which was used as a method of celestial divination. The calendar indicated what type of day it would be, such as favorable or unfavorable, mythological events, which could influence the day, as well as associated behavior of a particular day. The Cairo calendar of ancient Egypt was purchased by the Cairo Museum in 1943 after being discovered on a rolled up and damaged piece of papyrus paper. The Cairo calendar lists all the 365 days in the Egyptian year and is divided into 12 months with 30 days for each. However, due to a Greek influence, there was an addition of five extra days at the end of the year. Each month was divided into three decans, or weeks, consisting of 10 days each. The Cairo calendar was another vital piece of information which assisted early astrologers, oracles, and priests of ancient times. I'll have another video on the Egyptian zodiac and the god or goddess which represents your sun sign.